Thank you for coming today. Uh, just a tiny, tiny bit of background so you understand the, the, the place I'm coming from. I'm the co-founder of This Food World. It's a boutique business and marketing consultancy, and we do business innovation, which means over the last couple of years, we've worked with some very, very, very powerful but good brands that are brave enough to realize that the world is changing, which requires them to understand that world in a different way and develop strategies that are different, but also organizations that are different to be able to execute on those strategies. And that's what we've been working on for the last couple of years. What I've been asked to talk about today is the promise of big data and the context of marketing. So in the context of being able to segment better or tighter to be able to target better. In other words, to be able to optimize uh, the data that you have on customers in order to be able to target better and segment better, have better products and services. And the way I'd like to do that is I'd like to talk about three observations, three observations that builds the case for big data in this context. And then I'd like to talk about three requirements that are necessary for this promise to actually happen. And finally, maybe look at a, a potential uh, different vision moving forward. So the first thing I'd like to do is talk about these three observations. The first observation is that all parts, all parts of the value chain are directly or indirectly linked to data. And with that, I mean an organization's value chain all the way from inbound logistics to outbound logistics, but also our own personal value chain in what we're trying to achieve in life and what we're trying to do. It all is in some way or another linked to data. The second observation is that the ultimate goal of each component is to maximize, is to optimize their part of that value chain. Be more effective, be more efficient, be faster, earn more, be happier, whatever may, whatever may be the case. Therefore, it is widely believed that big data, big data is what's going to make this possible being able to really understand what's happening through data within your own context, but also across the board, is what's going to make this possible. Now, for that to be true, for that to actually be the case, three requirements need to be in place. The first one, someone touched on before, which is, the first requirement is that the data is correct. Now, I don't need to go into to massive explanations. We all know that we have many, many different, some of us at least, have different email accounts. We have registered for services with partial information, incorrect information. We haven't updated our information a few years later when they change, although we registered. And finally, we've all told a little bit less than the truth in some social network at some point in our life. Now, all that being brought together brings to one fundamental reality that today, there is no such thing as a clean database. There is no such thing as clean data. So one of the basic requirements of the foundation of the promise of big data in the context of marketing, i.e. targeting and optimizing and personalizing, is not in place today. The second is that the data tells a complete story. In order for this reality of big data delivering on marketing, it has to be able to tell a complete story. And with a complete story, we mean before, during, and after. It's the whole story of awareness, search, discovery, payment, consumption, enjoying it, telling people about it, recommending it, buying it again. And all that may not be the same person throughout the value chain, because the person buying isn't necessarily the person using. So a complete story needs to have all that information, the entire version of that. Now, that is incredibly rare, because the data sets are mostly different and separate. They're not the same. They're not in the same databases, or they're not in the form that it needs to be to enter a database. So we have typical situations where, for example, advertising have little sales data. Because we know that the marketing platforms where people advertise on is rarely where the purchase takes place. Or the opposite of that, retailer has limited personal information, but a lot, a lot of sales data. And what we end up with is a little bit of wastage. What we end up with are scenarios where I, three years later, on a weekly basis, still get served ads 
for a humidifier that I searched for approximately three years ago, that I then a week later bought, and someone knows I had an interest three years ago, you could question why they haven't given up by now, but someone knew that I had an interest three years ago, but they didn't know I bought it. And this problem goes beyond that. It even goes internally in organizations. A couple of months ago, I booked two tickets to Catania in Sicily. I received my confirmation, and a couple of days later, I was asked if I was interested in hotel rooms. It's a fair assumption, I'm going to Catania, I might want a hotel. If they had had the complete story, they would have known that I had booked a flat through Airbnb, that I wasn't interested actually in a hotel, but more importantly, I wasn't even staying in Catania, I was just flying into Catania, I was going to Ortigia. But again, one can forgive them for that. These are two completely different environments. But when a couple of days later, I get an email asking if I'm still interested in booking flights to Catania from the same company who I booked flights from a week earlier, I'm wondering how close are we to connecting these databases, even internally, in our own organizations to have a complete story. And the reality is that there's another complexity, which is the most valuable information is more often than not the most private information. And with private, I mean the conversations that you have with your family at night, the text messages that you send to your friends, the thoughts that you have in your head. And that is exactly, for example, a good example of that is how I bought my Samsung Note. I was sitting in a cafe in Stockholm called Saturnus, having a conversation with my friends that no one could observe. My friends were making fun of one of our friends because her husband had bought her Samsung Note, which of course six months ago, a year ago, was a joke to everyone because it was such a big phone. And I kept thinking in my head, very private, hang on a second, this is a pad, a phone, a Kindle, all in one, and one contract. I'm absolutely interested, personal. Came home, sat on my sofa, talked to my business partner, who knows a lot about mobile, asked what he thought. Again, here is the recommendation bit. I didn't get one. He thought it was a ridiculous idea. I stuck to my guns. Again, personal conversation on my sofa. And the next day, I bought it on Amazon, which is the first time any data about this entire journey was created. And it wasn't even in the ownership of Samsung. They still had no idea. I proceeded to tell everyone about Samsung phone. I made my brother bring his new iPhone back to the store so he could have a Samsung. Yes. I didn't, I kept recommending it. I kept getting text messages back saying, amazing, I'm so happy from dozens of people that I recommended to, all through text message, all through verbal. At this point, Samsung still doesn't know I have a phone. What they do know, that the person who didn't recommend the phone to me, but who is very known in mobile, and has 70,000 followers on Twitter, because they know that through big data, he's the one who three weeks ago gets a free phone from Samsung. I get nothing, because I'm not part of big data. Not that I'm bitter or anything like that, but I get nothing, because a complete story also includes all the data that you guys, we can't collect. It's personal, it's mine. So the reality is today that there is no such thing as a complete story, no matter how much data we have. Which brings me to the third point, that past behavior is a good indication of future behavior. Now let's look at that. Click doesn't mean interest. We know that approximately half of people who click do so by mistake, depending on what statistic you look at. About 8% of people are responsible for 55% of the clicks. So you know what, click doesn't mean interest. And purchase doesn't mean like. Just because I bought it doesn't mean I like it. I walked into a lift the other day, I complimented a guy on his amazing headphones, and he was like, yeah, but they're shit. Sorry for the language, I quote. <laughs> as far as data's concerned, he bought the headphones. As far as he's concerned, they're crap. Past choice doesn't mean future choice, even if the guy in the lift had loved the headphones. It doesn't mean he's going to buy the same product again, or the same brand again, or even that he's going to go to the same retail environment again to buy it. Because things change. And finally, past timing has nothing to do with future timing. We have no idea 
when people are going to do something again just because they did it at some point in the past? How often do you guys buy a fridge, a cooker, a bicycle, a car? Is there any pattern? Probably not. Lots of lots of things happen that makes your decision change. Because the reality is that today, analyzing the past does not help us understand the future. So then we're asking ourselves, does that mean that the promise that we started off, the promise of big data in the context of marketing is broken? Is it not there? Well, it depends. It depends on the vision that you have for the future of marketing. If you think marketing in the future is going to continue to be the way it is today, if you think our job is going to continue to be about getting more and more data on people so we can further and further segment and micro-target or develop what we perceive to be ideal products and solutions at the best price, using the best distribution channel for these people, then yes, the promise is slightly broken today and as an industry we need to work very hard to make sure that we have clean databases, that we can have complete stories and that we can figure out a way of predicting the future based on the past. But. If you have a slightly different vision, one that maybe, just maybe, someone else manages and owns that big data, and that is people, people like you and me, our own big data. Because the truth is, my big data, the way I know it, is 100% correct. I know my entire story. And I don't have to predict the future based on the past, because I have made, I'm making those decisions every day. I am in power of those decisions. And if we believe that the data will belong to the people who knows the data, then our job is no longer about figuring out how their big data can add value to our big data strategy. Our job is to understand how we can add consistent, extraordinary value in their big data, which is their lives, and figure out ways of making sense in that context. And in that scenario, we worry a little bit less about the technical practical side. Because somewhere along the line, we lost some of the knowledge by chasing all that information. But that knowledge still exists. It exists in the hands of people. And our job should be to just make sure that their big data is as big as possible, as exciting as possible, and as valuable as possible to them. Thank you very much for the time.